Hey folks, this is Dan Strong with Excel VBA is Fun. We have a question today from Kyle Evans. He said, hey, I need to know how to format cells to appear whenever I select a radio button. So I assume he's talking about either an option button or a checkbox on your worksheet. So he asked me some tips on how to do this. I did follow up with him and I said, hey, do you want it to just hide it or show it on the print out onto paper or do you just want the viewer to be able to see it or not see it and so he said he just wants the viewer to be able to see the darn thing whenever he clicks a certain option button on one of his administrative uh, worksheets so we're gonna explore that so let's put some content on here that we want to see so want to see and now we're gonna have some some stuff uh, some numbers I guess let's say don't want to see and send the don't want to see we're gonna say twenty dollars we're gonna say uh, 45 27 30 and one hundred thousand dollars so it's okay for them to see that it's expensive tea movies with friends thirty dollars what's thirty dollars uh, lot of coffee and a hundred thousand dollars is sale of company let's just say okay so we want them to be able to see this stuff but this we want to be hidden when we click a button let's go to the developer tab and let's go ahead and create our now, if you have an option button you have to have two option buttons on and off if you have a checkbox you can just use one so for now let's just use a checkbox and uh... let's see did i use an activex checkbox or did i use a forms one oop naughty me Let's delete that one. Insert a F ActiveX control uh, text box. The reason being is there's a lot more options when you click, right click and go to properties. For example, we're going to change the name of this. Uh, we can make it my uh, my view. I don't know what to call it. My view. We'll call it my view. And then you're going to change the caption right here to what you want it to say. So hide. Uh, or, or we could say show uh, text say so show text we'll know what that means and then you can do some other options on here uh, but we're just gonna leave it alone we take it off of design mode you can check and uncheck it there's no programming right now behind it but you can certainly check and uncheck it great thing about having an ActiveX control instead of a form control it's form control you pretty much need to assign a macro to most of these ActiveX controls you've got all kinds of things you've got mouse over if your mouse hovers over it you could activate it um, you could do um, right click sometimes double clicks or single clicks so in order to, to access those typically you go into design mode right here and that way when you click it it won't be checked it'll select it and you can modify it and, and if you double click on it it'll immediately take you to that control in your visual basic editor under that worksheet so this macro uh, is is the the actual uh, text of this of procedure is inside that worksheet um, so just know that my view underscore click the click event for the control called my view is held within sheet one so if you double click on sheet two, there's no programming in there, but sheet one, oh, that's got a control called my view. So let's say, uh, let's uh, let's take a look at the formatting here, and we could even uh, record a macro to see what the format changes do. But uh, typically, I think if you do a format, let's hit control one. Let's not record it just yet. Let's one way. Uh, if you go to a custom formatting instead of general, if you type uh, uh, semicolon, semicolon, semicolon. That is supposed to make it invisible to the naked eye, but if you look at it, so yeah, you see there, but if you click on it, you can still see that there is content there. Now, he didn't talk about uh, this being erased whenever, you know, people click and want to see what's on there, so he just wanted it to be invisible. So using VBA, or I guess even conditional formatting technically, but not with a not with a checkbox. So let's just go the VBA route. So let's say that uh, these cells become uh, that formatting whenever it's, this is checked, and when it's unchecked, they become general. So let's do all those actions. Let's um, let's go back to general formatting. Okay. So let's let's go back to that, and we're going to record a macro. So go to record macro. We're going to call it. 
uh, format. S who cares what we call it? We're, we're just going to use the, the stuff from here. So uh, we're going to select these four cells. Control 1 is your formatting. And we're going to take it from general to that that uh, uh, semicolon, semicolon, semicolon format. And so, uh, and that's fine. And we click on D6 for no random reason. Then all we're recording, I want to see what it looks like whenever we hit Control-1, and we format it right back over to General. I want to see what it looks like in the Visual Basic. So now let's stop recording, hit Alt-F11, and take a look at our new module that just appeared, Module 1. So we, it said we selected B2 through B5, which we sure did, but who cares about that part? Selection.numberFormat equals so selection dot number format or at least the dot number format part is the part we need to focus on equals semicolon 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 in quotes and then later on it was the it was the dot number format equals general and that was just like it's spelled so let's take that little snippet here and control x to cut and we're gonna go here and we're gonna paste it and then we're gonna tweak it so let's say instead of selection we could no let's it's a, you know let's let's go ahead and do it right um let's say that we're we're going to use our code that we use often in a lot of these videos to get our last row that way we can say b2 through b whatever the last row is so that way you can always have a dynamic range of what you want to be invisible but you might also have just very specific areas that you want to be invisible and they're always going to be the same range location so you could say range uh, 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 b2 through b5 in quote in parentheses dot number format instead of selection dot number format instead of all this selecting crap just go straight to the range and tell it the number format needs to equal this semicolon 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 to make it invisible, I'll even make a comment invisible, and um, and then the same thing, range blah 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 equals that. But now we're going to make it a little more dynamic. So let's just let's get the last row. So my last row equals. You can make up any variable that you want right there, but my lr equals this workbook dot sheets. Oops dot sheet e eats and this is just sheet one we don't have a special name for it right now dot cells rows dot count comma one dot in using xl up dot not x one up it's xl up um, dot row we're going to capture the row for whatever the last row is so let's hit f8 and start our macro very slow motion mode and debug so when I hit f8 it chooses five so that is the correct row of this in 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 column one here so that's good so that's my last row so now let's say let's make a dynamic range for, the range is going to be wait a second we've already we've already got it so we're going to say b2 through b and instead of hard coding the number five there we'll put an ampersand and we'll say whatever in the heck my lr is it's going to be b2 through b in this case five but it could be 6 if we type something here. So b2 through b, whatever that is, b2 through b5 right now, dot number format equals woo, that makes it invisible. And then, um, so now we'll deal with the checking. So we're going to say if, and since we're in the current worksheet, sheet, we can say me dot, and we could say um, my view, that was the name of this checkbox right there. Oh, stop that now. If me dot my view equals true, that means it's checked, then make this stuff invisible. Else, so if it's not true, meaning if it's not checked, then we want to do quite the opposite. We want to take this dynamic range and we want to make those cells equal to, quote, general. So we'll say not invisible. Oh my gosh. Okay. So, and then of course you have to have your end if 
or it would give you an error. So if this checkbox is true, let's hit F8. Oh, it's not true, it's false. So else B2 through B5 dot number format is going to be general, which is fine. So also another a note on that is um, if this we're referring to some cells on another worksheet. You would not want to say range B2 through B whatever. You'd want to say this workbook dot sheets sheet 2 or whatever you call the other sheet dot range blah 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 because if you don't put the uh, at least the sheets and then put the quotes in the name of the sheet dot all this stuff here then it will try to do stuff on the current worksheet instead of referring to the actual worksheet you want it to. So now let's put a stop marker right here and we're going to do a click event right now. We're going to click on it that triggers it. So we got the last row is 5 and so if that checkbox equals true, well this time it is, then range dot blah 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 number format equals that. It becomes invisible. Did you see that right there? Did you catch that? Rewind the video if you didn't. So and then boom boom boom. Okay. So I think we can. it's safe to say that it's going to work the other way. We've seen it. So let's uncheck it. Boom. Visible. Boom. Invisible. Boom. Visible. Boom. Invisible. Boom. Visible. So now I'm curious. Let's protect the worksheet just for fun. I pressed Alt T P P to protect. Now, so okay. So if I click on this, whoa, -oh, unable to set the number format property of the range class. So that could come up. Let's click End. Now let's unprotect it. Alt T P P. So right now we had the settings to where you can't change number formats whenever the worksheet's protected. So hit Alt T P P, and you need to select Format Cells. When the workbook's protected, you need to be allowed to format cells, or the macro even needs to be allowed to. So hit OK. Now we can change the formatting even though the workbook is protected. So let's hit Show Text. Or let's click this. Okay, click it again. Now, so we can still see it. We can. I don't think we can type over it. Let me hit delete. Okay, because that cell is protected. But we can still change the visibility of it. And I don't know. Let's see how the printout looks. I imagine they're going to be invisible in the printout as well. Yes, they are. So they're they're going to be invisible there. And now they're going to be visible for the printout. So there there are several degrees of control that you can enact on those. So that is how to make text visible or invisible. Uh, don't forget to grab your copy of my free workbook, The Essential Excel VBA Snippets. That's copy and pasteable snippets of code that you can implement into your workbook right now and make your codes flow with little magic bits of code. It shows you how to use lots of different controls such as text boxes, um, user form controls, list boxes, check box um, option buttons, how to use the uh, uh, the spin buttons, how to use all kinds of different things and how to use them in fun little ways. And the reason I call it es essential Excel VBA snippets is because they're just tiny little bits of code that you can copy and paste into your own stuff and immediately have some working tweakable um, code that you can utilize. So be sure and click on sign up for uh, sign up for the free ebook. You'll get uh, a free e-newsletter of mine, and uh, that includes lots of tips, um, some daily uh, some some uh, tips that come periodically, as well as promotions, coupon codes for different things that I may have coming out. Uh, be sure and check out my brand new barcoding um, uh, barcoding course on Udemy. So you can actually learn how to scan a barcode, how to create your own barcode label sheets. You'll learn how to, to use that to make your life a lot easier. You can do data entry um, using a barcode scanner. So you can scan it off the wall. You might have barcodes on your folders. You might have them on different uh, parts of your office. You might use it for inventorying your um, for your depreciation schedules and for your asset lists or you might just use it to file things you know you scan this folder and then you scan the area that the drawer that you're filing it to or um, there's just so many different applications you can make up whatever you want you could scan a name badge and immediately have somebody be clocked in 
and then you scan maybe the job numbers or the activity number or something like this so there's a lot of potential especially for small businesses especially for for I guess personal use if you're just wanting to create a system for stuff that you like to do maybe hobbies maybe tasks that you need to do chores whatever uh, check out my barcoding course on Udemy and if you click on this link uh, before before July 2014 is over, you'll actually get it for just $19 instead of the retail of uh, 49 So check that out. Um, anyway, that's how you check and uncheck uh, to make a to make the text invisible or visible. Thanks for watching and God bless.